France's TGV has revolutionized high speed rail, not only in Europe, but the world. There truly is no better way to travel than on one of these iconic high speed trains. I'll be taking a first class trip all the way from Paris down to the south of France, the country's second largest city, Marseille. Expect some stunning scenery, cafe bar hacks, and more as we cross France at speeds of 320 km per hour. Now let's get this show on the rails. Oh yeah, as always, I leave out the important stuff. I'm staying in La Défense, meaning I need to take a quick hop on the RERA to start from where the train does. Paris's Gare de Lyon station. Whilst the station itself dates back to 1849, the current station building before us originates from 1900 and features a spectacular architectural design both inside and out. As is also evidenced by the original train shed in Hall 1, dating back to the same era as the former. Whilst much of the station's iconic design is still evident today, it's currently undergoing both an internal and external refurbishment, due to be completed by 2024, as is evidenced by the famous Le Plan Bleu restaurant. Gare de Lyon is a hub for many TGV services, both nationally and internationally. A domestic TGV can be seen to the right, whilst the TGV Lyria for services to Switzerland is just next to it. Most services here stop at Lyon, which is where the name comes from. A closer look at the departure board shows us that our train is actually departing from the newer hall too, and that it's also 20 minutes late. But let's not talk about that right now. Gare de Lyon is categorised mainly by two different halls. Hall 1, where we are now, lettered from platforms A to N, and Hall 2, a modern extension with platform numbers 5 to 23. Simple, right? The scenes in Hall 2 right now showcase just how chaotic this station can be. On the day I was travelling, it was Bastille Day, a national holiday in France. This meant that even at 7am, this station showcases why it's worthy of the title of both Paris's and France's second busiest station, which in normal traffic sees over 150 million passengers annually, second only to Paris's Gare du Nord station. This huge crowd isn't just here for SNCF services. Here we can see the Freccia Rossa 1000 adding some colour to this gloomy Parisian morning, preparing to head to Milan via Lyon and the Alps, which I have looked at before in the stunning executive class. Boarding normally commences 20 minutes prior to departure, but as our train is 20 minutes late already, dealing with these huge crowds is becoming quite unbearable. Not to mention the fact that despite the current chaos, Ticket scans are still conducted at the gates just before departure. I honestly don't know how SNCF staff managed to do it. But anyway, here we are. Our train today is the famous TGV duplex built by Alstom. Each set is eight carriages long and is at present the only double-decker high-speed train in the world, capable of over 300 kilometers per hour. Our train is formed of 16 coaches, which is two eight-car sets coupled together. The set at the rear is part of the original series build, dating back to 2002, whilst the front set is strangely enough one of the Euro duplex sets typically found on the Paris to Barcelona route, built back in 2012. A variant of the Euro duplex operates Morocco's Al Borac service, which is the only high speed train in Africa. Being double decker trains makes the duplex design a double edged sword. On the one hand, it's great for capacity, as these trains can seat over 500 people each, but on the other, it can be poor for accessibility, and the boarding process isn't as smooth, as can be evidenced here. Despite the train being nearly full when booking, I managed to secure a top deck seat for today's journey in first class down to Marseille, where the views are undoubtedly the best. Our TGV first runs non-stop down the full length of the LGV Sud-Est prior to joining the LGV Méditerranée beyond Lyon, where we then make station calls at both Avignon and Aix-en-Provence. Our journey time to Marseille will take just 3 hours and 20 minutes to cover the 800km journey from Paris today, which should be an absolutely fantastic one. So sit back and enjoy the ride.
Our departure from Paris is 24 minutes late at 2 minutes past 8 Central European time. Seen shortly after departure to the right is Paris's Bercy station. This station handles a lot of the city's regional and intercity traffic to the south of France and acts as a relief station for Gare de Lyon as and when necessary. We can also see SNCF's workshop, the Technic Centre Sud-Est Européen, where SNCF's large fleet of TGVs serving destinations to and from Gare de Lyon is maintained. Trenitalia's dedicated Freccia Rossa fleet, used in France, is also stabled here. However, most heavy maintenance was done in Italy prior to the closure of the line through the Alps. After navigating the Parisian suburbs, we quickly find ourselves on the LGV Sud-Est. This is France's original high-speed line, which opened in 1981, and was of course the first to see the iconic first-generation TGV Sud-Est trains traversing the full length between Paris and Lyon. At almost 40 years old, these trains were sadly retired in 2020, though number 16, which set the world's original 380km per hour speed record, is now preserved by SNCF and can still be seen around France being used on special tours and showcases. As for our TGV duplex, it's currently comfortable close to the line's top speed of 300km per hour. As for what makes these trains so comfortable, well, the first class seat is how it starts. It's incredibly plush and spacious. You could easily sit here for three hours, or maybe longer. Each seat contains foldable armrests on both sides, with the right one also responsible for managing the electronic recline function, as indicated by the two arrows. This is a huge help with adjusting the already generous legroom present, though the one downside is the footrest, which, if you're on the shorter side, you may prefer. As for me, most of you who've been here for a while will know I cannot stand them. The tray tables on all TGVs have to be the largest I've ever seen on a train. Perfect for a laptop if you want to get some work done or kick back and relax. There's also a small storage net above this for placing items and clothes, though for the latter it may be best to use the coat hangers placed next to the window. The reading light is present overhead at the solo seats. Table seats have lamps. A standard European power socket is present too, just above the personal litter bin. And finally, there's a drawdown blind to reduce the suddenly harsh sunlight as we make our way across France. Overall, the features of the duplex are amazing, and you can tell a lot of the design has been well thought out. Now, there is a cafe car on board, but this is extremely popular with long queue times. A good hack is to order using the SNCF Connect website. It's fairly simple to use, and whilst I do speak basic French, the language option is very useful. All you need to do is enter the number of your train and you can order as you normally would through any online shop. If you also have a carte avantage discount card like I do, you can receive a small discount on your order. Just enter the card number at the checkout and hey presto. You'll then get allocated a pickup time window and when your time comes, you can then head over to the cafe car at your leisure and pick up your food once it's ready. This is in coach 4 or 14, depending on which duplex set you're sat in. I've now used this three times and it's been very useful, especially when it's incredibly busy like this. Those who pre-order their food online can pick it up from this part of the counter here. And with that, breakfast is served. Still, I sadly couldn't cheat my way out of having to stand due to how busy it was, but this was greatly made up for by the stunning views of the French countryside. A quick break to say I hope you're enjoying the video so far and please do subscribe to the channel which is free and the best way to support my work. Thanks! We are now leaving the LGV Sud-Est after almost two hours of travel time and are making our way onto the LGV Rhône-Alpes, the link to the LGV Méditerranée. Everything was going so well until... Afin d'évacuer un voyageur malade, ceci 
pied d'un arrêt de service, vous êtes néanmoins autorisé à sortir sur le quai pour vous aérer le temps de l'évacuation. As a summary, a passenger has taken ill on the train, and to evacuate them off, we are having to make an unscheduled stop at Lyon Saint Exupéry TGV station. This station links the high speed line with Lyon Saint Exupéry Airport, though it's mainly served by low cost Wego trains, with one scene arriving into the station now. With the delay being indefinite, we were allowed out onto the platform for some fresh air, though, with the amount of people smoking, I can't really call the air fresh. Funnily enough, this isn't the first time this has happened to me on my travels. Back in June, my Eurostar returning from Paris was stuck at Lille Europe for almost three hours, but we weren't allowed off until midway through the second hour due to custom arrangements. As this is a domestic TGV service within Europe, this fortunately didn't apply this time. The Wego departure means it's time for us to do the same. This unscheduled stop added an extra half hour onto our delay, but this was definitely an interesting way of doing so. It's five past 10 when we finally leave Lyon airport. Had we been on time, we'd be 12 minutes away from our first stop of Avignon by now but it's all part of the fun, right? We'll now take the LGV Ron Alp as far as Valence, where we then join the LGV Mediterranee. Despite the delay, we quickly reach the line speed of 300 km per hour once again, as we make our way towards the south of France. I took a quick walk through the train to show you standard class on the TGV duplex. This is in a 2x2 configuration with both table and airline style seats. This is comfortable enough in my opinion and is definitely a great way to travel on the TGV. Oh, and here's what the lower deck on the TGV duplex looks like. It also features a very generous space for people with reduced mobility, though if possible I really recommend sitting on the upper deck for better views and a quieter ride. Sadly as well, you're rather restricted as there's no connecting vestibules between coaches on the lower deck. Passing Valence TGV marks our entry onto the LGV Mediterranee, which is where the real fun begins. Here we not only reach the TGV duplex's top speed of 320 km per hour, but we also experience scenery that only the Mediterranean can offer. We now cross over the Avignon viaducts, though I sadly got the short end of the straw sitting on the right hand side as we cross the river Rhone. On the left, there are views of both the Pont d'Avignon as well as the Palais des Papes, one of the most important medieval Gothic buildings in Europe. We are arriving at destination. Please make sure you take all your belongings with you. Crossing over the viaduct sees us finally arrive into our first stop of Avignon TGV, one of the strategic out-of-town stations that provides links to France's extensive high-speed network. A lot of passengers alighted here to connect with the TER shuttle that provides a handy link to Avignon's town centre, located around 6 kilometres away from here. The accessible toilet shown here on the duplex is located on the bottom deck, with standard wads mainly being on the top. I found this one to be very clean and well equipped. The facilities worked really well too, so I honestly have no complaints.
Well, okay. Maybe the sensor on the tap could have been a bit more responsive. But a very minor issue. Overall, it's a thumbs up from me. One thing I have to mention is how amazing the duplex's ride quality is. Despite the interior being very cramped, it's incredibly smooth, even as we're doing 320 km per hour. The distance between stations is now noticeably shorter. A bit further down the high speed line sees us arrive into our penultimate stop of Aix-en-Provence TGV. Unlike Avignon, there is no rail link to the town centre, which made the station's location a subject of controversy when the LGV Méditerranée was first built in the early 2000s. As we come to the end of our journey, let me draw my conclusions. I can't really blame SNCF for the second delay owing to an ill passenger needing to be evacuated, and to be honest, I've really enjoyed the trip regardless of the delays. Funnily enough, my dad was amazed at the time I arrived in Marseille, despite the delays, as he would often tell me about him doing this journey in around 9 hours in the 70s, long before the arrival of high speed rail in France. My ticket price, including my carte avantage discount of 30%, totaled 117 euros. SNCF prices are based on demand, and as I travelled on a public holiday, it was incredibly busy and only first class was available. Though I did recover 25% of the ticket cost due to SNCF's G30 delay repay scheme, bringing the cost down to 87 euros. First class on this route can cost as little as 60 euros without the discount card, though I do wish that SNCF had catering included with the ticket price. Anyway, the arrival into Marseille Saint Charles is 56 minutes late. I personally think this is one of the best routes to experience the TGV, and I 100% recommend it. But what did you think? Do you have a favourite TGV route? I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments below. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed the video today, and if you did, please like and share it to aid the channel's growth, and do consider subscribing and turning on notifications for more content such as this every week. Right, I've got a few hours to kill in Marseille now, and I'm going to do it by looking around the city. So, thanks so much for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next video.